Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Wednesday, December the 14th, the year's 2022. Let's talk trading. Trading with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and different from Walmart's. Walmart, the traders like it when we actually do some trading and record it. Um, so uh, let's see what we, let's uh, call some trades out here. Something will occur because uh, that's the thing about the trading world, right? It, it right. may not even happen, but we'll see what happens. So, uh, um, so you've got the you're using one minute flip flop boxes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I am. And we've my, got my the. Only, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say my only concern here is that with that we're stuck between sixty and seventy right now. Um, and so the flip-flop box is inside of that that range as well so the nice thing about it is if it does break it it can break it good but if it doesn't break it um we could be stuck here and waiting on a trade you know <clears throat> but we'll see what happens right and today's kind of a, today's kind of an oddball day because we got the fomc statements coming out you know at two o'clock eastern time eastern u.s time and so you know, the day we got, what, 62 pips range on the day. And so we kind of, by this point in time, we should be up to like 90 or so, at least based on the last uh, nine months or 12 months of trading anyway, that's where we've been. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was telling you earlier that last night, you know, I went to go trade and <laughs> basically the market was completely flatlined. It just didn't move at all. So I didn't get a single trade off last night. You know, it looks like we want to come off of the bottom here. I went short. Out we'll of, see what happens. Out of the flip-flop box? Um, I was late coming out of the flip-flop box, so I was taking a Walmart trade there. Oh, uh, it's 60? Um, yeah, and I probably sh I should have gotten in a lot earlier than that. Um, I was just that noise that you heard everybody heard of, that was just me setting tps and stop losses no okay and we'll see what happens i mean i may i may win i may lose i don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah, so you I, i'd be looking for a long here because uh we had a three ball a while ago in the last hour and then we had a two ball at the bottom this hour And also, what did we have? Uh, switch over to M30 here on this chart, and M30 is about to go green, and we're right at the daily open. So we're crisscrossing here. Only so my daily open is at 20, call it 23.63 or 64. It's 63.5. <laughs> so it's right in the middle. Where's your daily open? I went. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Tell you in a second. Uh, fifty nine point three. Yeah. Um, I averaged in just to try to cut my loss down a little bit. We'll see what happens. I think I'm gonna take a loss here because it's just not looking very good. But I'm gonna wait a, a little bit because we are in this range, so we can very easily go back down to the bottom. And if I take a loss and it goes back to the bottom, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm going to look, switch over to M5 and see if I can get an M5 turn trade here. So if this M5 can close green, then the next one would be, then it would be entering on the next candle. Sitting here and seeing what happens, right. spending a lot of time doing it to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, we're right around that daily open, so it's yeah. uh, it's dancing there. So we're not going to get a turn trade on that bar. We got in fact that M5 was an outside bar for the inside bar, outside bar traders. Okay, here's your third dot long on the uh. Yeah. Right here, so you yep. had two aqua dots. You're coming out of the flip-flop box. 
And usually on the third yeah. or fourth dot is when the price launches like it just yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went long coming out of that box. And, and I took my profit off the table when it hit 70. It only hit 69 on my charts. Yeah, it got to 70.1 on mine. So that was good for, what'd you get, four or five oh, pips? Um, hold on a second, let me just flip over to my terminal screen. I got 4.3. Are you still in that short or are you? Or yeah, you... I am. I'm still in my short. I didn't get out. I should have gotten out, but I did not. So now, um, if you were, uh, you took your profit on this one. And one of the things that um, I've learned to take profit or when to take profit is I've got this little uh, multimeter over here. Let me show you the indicators. Okay, it's the uh, CRO2022 multimeter um, IND2, which is the uh, EMA5. And so I've noticed if M1 or M5 get to about five pips on a move like that, especially a, a quick move, you just punch out. And, you know, do you leave some on the table? Sometimes, but not that often. So now, if you had re-entered the trade here on the fourth dot long, then you then you'd be riding, and right now you'd be underwater slightly. You just have to see what happens. And then looking at the M5, you'd still be waiting to get in the trade because this candle needs to close. And then you go long on the next candle. And one of the things I do when I'm scalping on, on this one, on this turn trade, if, if price opens above the EMA5, so it's going away, then you ride the dots. But if the EMA5 is above the price, and once it hits it, if you have profit, that's when to take it. Because you'll notice how often it'll come to that EMA5 and reject for whatever reason. It's just an observation. But I've run the frequency distributions on, you know, high minus EMA5 and EMA5 minus low. So that's why I know statistically, you know, at, you know, whatever number of pips, like I said, five on the M1 and M5, you know, take your five pips or so, six pips, be happy out of the trade. Yeah. If it's, exactly. a, if it's a quick move, because usually, and even if it's a slow move, a lot of times it'll pull back down. And that's why, because it makes these wicks, as you can see it making it right now, right there, it sees back to the EMA5. Yeah. I went to, while you were talking, I went short again to uh, basically to uh, um, average in, and now I'm going to get out of that first trade with $132 profit. Wow, did, did, wow, just jumped down for you. Yep, exactly. And here's the reason why I did that, so I can explain that to the traders. You know, what did I say in the beginning of this video that, hey, the problem is we're stuck in this range here, you know, and because we're stuck in this range here, when it, you know, if it's not going to break it, and it's not going to break it. So I took that first trade, breaking that 60, because I, oh, look at this, it's finally breaking it. Oh, I guess what? I was wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wonder if once it happens. So then what happened was I, I saw a turn trade come, um, came in again, and that turn trade happened at, uh, um, let's see, 64, 8. And so I went in a second time there. Um, to average in, that's also, and it's funny because at the same time I took that long trade where I went and picked up the four pips or so. Um, then what I did was I waited for it to get up to the 70. When it got up to the 70 the first time, I went and exited out my, uh, my long trade, took those four pips or so, and then let it go back down. And then when it ran back up and it got up to uh, 68.9, I went short again. And so between all of that, I picked up 
um, roughly 15 pips between you have not 15 pips. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't really, I can't add this one. <laughs> I, I picked up, uh, uh, eight pips in total, you know? So there you go. You know, it's, it's just that simple. Did I take one loss? Yeah, I took one loss, you know? And that loss was about three pip loss, but all the other trades more than covered what my loss was. And so, so you can, so, yeah, so you can see here that M5 turn trade never materialized. So uh, I'm still waiting for it to happen. At least. Yeah, let's go and talk. Let's go and talk about that for a second, sir. You know, what I'm doing is I'm trading on the one minute. Right. You're trading on the five minute. And the advantage of that you have in trading on that five minute is that, you know, you never got into that trade in that mess, you know, that I got into. Now, and so what that means is you didn't have to go and sit through draw down. You didn't have to sit through do, you know, some fancy footmark or footwork to go and make money. You know, you didn't have to just sit through any of that. So you had a, a major advantage over me because it wasn't messing with your head because in your head, it's like, that it just didn't happen. Who cares? You know, there'll be trade. They'll eventually show up. Whereas on my part, the problem is I ain't going to deal with all that nonsense. But the advantage I had was that I was able to pick up, you know, uh, some some pips, you know, I picked up a bunch of pips in that process. So that's that's the the, the trade off that we as traders have to go and uh, make a decision on which way we're going to do it. Right. Yeah. You you took the battle because see, I was just looking for the long because of the um, the, the, the three balls and the two balls, and now the one ball at the bottom. I was just waiting for it to make the move. So on the one minute, um, that third, you know, taking that third dot out of that one flip-flop box, that would have been one of the trades. Cause you know, I don't just trade off of one chart. I look at the M1, I look at M5, I look at M30, I look at H4, you know, cause on H4, um, I'm basically looking um, to see if it's gonna uh, hit an H4 pivot or not which it uh, definitely did. In fact, if I switch over to this chart and switch to H4, you can see price took out this H4 pivot. Um, and this H4 just started a couple hours ago, I believe on my charts. So those are, and I use H4 for target and it's one of those things where, you know, I try not to trade against the H4 candle color, the M30 candle color, and the uh, M5 candle color, like, you know, and if I do trade against one of them, then it's like, okay, take your one pip or two and be be happy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and uh, looking back at, you know, some traders may wonder why I took that first trade. Well, I took that trade for a couple of reasons. One, there was a flip-flop box above me. I should have gotten into it early and based on that idea, but I was breaking a Walmart line, okay, right. and I had, I had H4 in my direction. I had M30 and M5. They were all in my direction. I had all, I was below all my indicator two um, dots and it just didn't work out. You know, it's, as, as the expression goes, you know, suck it up by the cup, you know, yeah. it's just what's going to happen sometimes. Now, if you would have stayed in that first trade, you'd be out with four or five fifths right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, you know, we can, we can do one of two things here. We can either say, yeah, well, that's training, or we can say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And get angry for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. But uh, hopefully, traders, you know, the fastest 15 minutes in trading is just about up now. But uh, you can see how, um, you know, depending on what method you use, um, you just have to stick with it and be patient and then take profit when profit presents and and take take your signals like walmart did he was short and long at the same time he wasn't hedged he was in two it was two sets of trades one short one long you know now the net result he was hedged but um that's not the he he didn't enter that trade as a hedge so see fellow traders it's not what you trade it's how you trade it so go out there and drain the banks this is the rumpled one over and out.